Okay, so Dozen a Day, Pink Book, which is the very first book. I think it's called Elementary. Group one, exercise one, which is called walking. Let's get at it. And it is like you're walking. Say that those are your two feet, right? Those are your two legs, your two feet. And you take your fingers for a walk. Just like that, that's the movement. Now, that's a better angle, I think. That's a better angle. And you take your fingers for a walk. Now, this is one of the exercises this is one of the exercises where I realized that it could be played in a few ways. Now I think the easiest way to play this particular exercise is this. Here we go. Two, three, four. Off. Um, so why the easiest? Because all the arm participates. No, it's not just limited to the fingers, but the whole wrist and forearm participate in the motion. So what you do here is, yes, you move your fingers, but also the wrist and the arm participate just enough. I think that's the best way to play this exercise because you also learn to drop, to drop some of your body weight, to drop the weight into the key with your thumb on that note. On the second note instead, what happens is, what happens is with the pressing of the keys, with the pressing of the keys, the wrist comes up as some kind of reaction because what happens is you grip the key you grip the key and the energy the energy goes in that direction and this comes up as you grip the D the wrist comes up just slightly so that you're ready to drop again. That's the motion of walking. Now, it has to be said that the very basic idea here is that there is a legato, which means when a finger goes down, the other finger comes up. When a finger goes down, the next one comes up and prepares. So it's a chain of events that goes down, this comes up and gets ready. This goes down, that comes up and gets ready. In a chain of events. So I think it's the best way to do this exercise is to have all the elements of the hand, wrist and forearm to participate in the motion. See? Everybody does their bit. The finger goes down, the wrist and arm drop. The wrist is allowed to drop a tiny bit. As you make contact with the key, as you make contact with the key and this firms up, the wrist is allowed to drop, you see? And as this comes down and makes contact with the key, the wrist comes up just as some kind of reaction, ready to drop again. Another thing about this exercise, when played like this, <clears throat> is this. I think it's made up of two phrases. I think it's made up of two phrases. Like that. Now you should be seeing them. That's it. Like that. It's made up of the first phrase, the first two bars, the second phrase, the first two bars. Why is that? Why is that? Because at this particular stage, right here, right here in between the two phrases, 
you have a C followed by another C. And what does that mean? That you have to, you, you're forced to let go of the sound. You're forced to let go of the key because you have to play that key again. See, it's a C. So if you want to play that C again, you have to let go of the key and play it again, which means that you have to have just a tiny bit of room for breathing. I consider it like breathing. So I, used, I tell my students, don't feel too glued to that key. You're actually, you're actually allowed to let it go and drop it again. Three, four. Right there. And I made some kind of breathing sound because that's the way I think about it. One, two, three. At that point, it's like as if we've taken a breath because you need to let go of the C, otherwise, you won't be able to play it again. It's like the breathing moment between two phrases. That's what I mean. You're, you, you have to tell the student that not to feel too glued to the C key at that point. Otherwise, otherwise they're not going to be able to play the next C in bar three. You see, so I tell them that I tell them to, to pretend that they're taking a breath. So they have to let go. They have to let go of the key at that point so that they can play it again. Another way of playing that exercise is to use just your fingers. So, while this, I think, is the best way, and it's the most natural, it's the most natural for everyone, kids, adults, I think is the most natural, especially kids, because they're, they're, they're unbiased, and their body, will, their body will do the natural thing, which is to, to, to involve all the elements in this apparatus. Another way of playing this exercise, which is slightly, I, I think it's slightly more complex, would be to isolate the fingers, which I think is what I remember doing when I was a kid. I remember, I remember my teacher saying, lift those fingers, lift those fingers. And you can do that by all means. So let's pretend that let's, let's isolate the fingers and let's, for a moment, this is a bad word to use, I don't think it's a great word to use, freeze this. Let's freeze the arm and the wrist, and let's just work with our fingers. The exercise becomes something like this. Three, four. See, I'm still doing a legato. I'm still applying the concept of one finger goes down, the next finger gets ready. One finger goes down, the next finger gets ready. One finger goes down, the next finger gets ready, and so on. I'm still doing a legato motion, but this time it's just the fingers working. I isolated the fingers from everything else. I think that's more complex. I think that's more difficult. It's another way of doing that exercise, but it requires you to just think about the fingers. That's another way of doing the same exercise. And it will get people to just think about their fingers. And also, of course, they'll have to think about their wrist and forearm as well. But in this case, they're thinking about them being still. Now, another way of doing this exercise would be to change the width of the movement of the fingers, as in to move your fingers less. So, so far, so far, whether I was doing this, or this. So 
So whether I was using my wrist and arm or not, along with the fingers, um, I was, say I was striking the keys. I was striking the keys from a distance. See, I was kind of loading up and pff, releasing the energy. See, now what would happen, I wonder, if I diminish the width of the movement, the range of the movement of the fingers. I'm doing the same exercise, but I am limiting I am limiting the breadth and the width of the movement of the fingers, whether I'm involving the arm and the wrist or not. Somehow I feel that if the fingers move less, I have to use, logically, I have to use the rest of the apparatus a little bit more to get the same sound. Now, what would happen, I wonder, if I reduce the width of this movement to zero? In other words, can I do the same exercise by always touching the keys? Never leave the keys. Let's see what happens. Three, four. I can. I can. It's perfectly possible. See, that's another way of doing the same exercise. Okay, what happens now if I try and do the exercise, say, moving my fingers as little as possible, so staying basically staying in contact with the keys and without using the wrist and my forearm. Let's see what happens. Two, three, four. It's very difficult. You see, somehow the wrist, it's, it's easier to use the wrist and of course it is. Of course it is. It's easier to use the whole apparatus rather than to isolate its components. But let's try and isolate the fingers now. Just fingers, no wrist, no arm. That felt the most difficult of all. So, to recap, all of those exercises, I think, I think that's an exercise in legato, in legato playing. Yeah. Um, and the easiest way of doing it is the natural way of doing it. So to, to involve, to involve all the elements in the playing apparatus, the fingers, the wrist and the arm, just enough, just enough all those components just participate enough as needed to obtain the sound that we want. So in legato playing, in legato playing, the way that I would have uh, a beginner, very young student to play it is to use the whole apparatus to drop with the wrist on finger one and just to rise, just naturally, on finger two. I think you'll find that if, if, you, just, if you just tell the kids what the notes are and what notes to press and if, and if you give them this exercise, this is the way, this is the way they'll move because it's the, it's the most natural way. It's the most natural way. Just enough, just enough width of the finger movement, just enough width uh, and, and, uh, and breadth of that movement, and a little bit of participation of the wrist and arms. Uh, that's the 
I think is the easiest way of doing it. The most difficult way of doing it would be to, to, to limit to zero the width of the, of the finger movement and, and no participation of wrist and forearm. And it becomes something like this. which I don't think has got much of a point, but still, those are the notes, they can be played like that. But I don't think it's, um, it's I, I don't think it's an exercise that would have any practical use. So that's it for today, I hope you enjoyed it. It's just a collection of my thoughts um, about technique when I when I teach technique. So I'll see you at the next one. Thank you.